<clears throat> Hello and welcome back to the Hype Queen podcast. You are with Megan as always. I hope you're having an amazing week. Um, I am recording this with video, which I usually just do audio, um, but I have been, I don't want to say forced because that's a little bit dramatic, but I have been requested to um leave the video on so that we can get snippets of random shit that I say um and use it for video content so I am literally just staring at myself as I talk through this today um I took a break last week from the podcast I um had a huge weekend um the racing was in town here um and I really felt I was so I just had the best time, absolutely the best time ever. But coming back and trying to get into um, the, I don't know, the zone or whatever you want to call it, of bringing you relevant content, um, but also something that is going to not get you to the end of, you know, how long these podcasts last for. And you're like, well, she just spurted around a bunch of shit. Never want to do that. Always want to add value. So I thought I'll take the week off, um, rejuvenate um, and come back. And it was interesting because over the course of the week, I had some really cool ideas about um, things that I wanted to talk about and things that were super relevant um, in at the moment with um, people that I'm talking to, people that I'm working with. Um, and yeah, so I'm really excited to, you know, roll out the next couple of weeks podcast. But um, in the meantime, um, during the week, I got tagged in something on Facebook, which really, really inspired me to talk about this particular podcast episode, um, which if you read the title, you'll see it's called Teach People How You Want to Be Treated. Now, the Facebook post that I got tagged in by one of the most important people in my whole life to me, it said, unfortunately, a lot of y'all met me when I lacked boundaries and was a people pleaser. Let me reintroduce myself. I have burned bridges as needed right? It's pretty powerful. And as a reformed, well, unless they're reforming people pleaser, this is really, really powerful for me because I was thinking to myself, not only did it give me the ability to go back and look at all of the dumb shit that I used to do, you know, just to fit in or just to make other people happy, which made me miserable um, and see that I don't do all those things now. And I, you know, I'm a happy gal, but also that other people who I care so deeply about have also recognized this in me as well. So it was really, really nice to, and while obviously it was a joke, like, you know, it's a very dramatic post and it's like, you know, very like in your face, I suppose, um, you know, but it is, it's really nice to sort of recognize, especially when this is such a big issue for you. Um, well, for me anyway. Um, and since releasing this and really being confident in myself and backing myself, um, yeah, it's really great to look back and sort of see all of the opportunities that have presented themselves to me um, because I am a lot less concerned about people pleasing and making everybody else around me happy at the sacrifice of my own self um, and cutting out people that absolutely did not serve me, but I felt the need to keep them in my life for whatever reason. Obviously, you know, there was a secondary gain to all of that when I was going through it all. Um but yeah, releasing that and being, you know, this current iteration of myself, um, you know, where I feel very in my, sorry, <laughs> I've just looked over and my cat has just thrown something off of the back of the, um, in the spare room. So we'll just disregard that. Anyway, so yes, everything that I have gained um, since releasing all of those things and all of those people and becoming a lot more ruthless, I suppose, in a way that I will cut you out of my life if I am able to um, and not in a negative way and not wishing any ill will or saying, you know, I hope like bad shit happens to you because you were mean to me, um, all of those things, not doing any of that, simply understanding that, you know, people in my life served a purpose for them, they don't anymore. So, you know, we can both move on. So something also that we well I in particular heard was you know a term and whether I heard it at school or whether it was you know something that my parents used to say to me I can't remember specifically but I was always told treat people how you want to be treated so that was really sort of a long way into getting me into I was really nice to everybody um because you know I really wanted people to be nice to me I was really accepting of everybody I was always, you know, 
Um, I was there for everybody. You know, they could dump their problems on me. You know, they'd come to me and ask me for advice. I'd always give it, um, you know, come to me with ideas and ask me what I thought. And I would, you know, always like, yeah, that's so awesome. That's amazing. Like, you know, that's so cool. Um, and it's purely because that is what I wanted in other people um, because I didn't do that for myself. Did it for everybody else, but, you know, for whatever reason, I didn't do that for myself. So, you know, the flow and effect of that is obviously everyone around you can, you know, use all of your energy and all of, you know, your, like, I don't know, call them high vibes, if you will, for their own gain and not not necessarily doing it selfishly, but being known as that person who literally will, you know, pump you up and, you know, you can go and complain to and who will always be there for you no matter how you treat them is not great <laughs> for that person in that position, right? So now I have cultivated a, you know, group of people around me and I guess more so my close, you know, intimate group of friends and family that I can go to with any crazy idea, any dream, any, any, anything really that I want to achieve or that I think in my mind. And I do not for one second stop and think, holy shit, what are they going to think? Because I know that those people, if I say that idea to you, will be like, knowing you, you'll probably go and do that. Right. So I have not taught them to treat me that way, but I have kept them in my life because they do give me that. I have removed others from my life because I was really firm with my boundaries. I explained how I wanted to be treated. Those expectations were not met and therefore not people that I choose to continue to keep in my life. So let me give you an example because people are not mind readers, by the way. You can sit back and think in your head, oh, I really wish that they would do that like I used to do. Oh, I really wish that, you know, they would ask me how my day is going or, you know, I really wish that they wouldn't speak to me in that sort of <laughs> that sort of tone. And you can think that all you like, but unless you communicate that to somebody, they're not going to bloody know, right? So I'll give you an example and I was going to use a relationship one, um, but I'm going to use a work-related one, right? Hypothetical. You have a coworker who you find that you are constantly bumping up against, that you don't like the way that either you feel like they shoot down your ideas or, you know, the way that they spoke to you once or the way that they communicated to you or the way they communicate to you. You know, there's endless ones. And I'm sure you can think of your own as well, that you just have this coworker, like whether they're coworker, whether it's your boss, doesn't matter right? Or someone that even works for you. Doesn't matter, right? Unless you explain to them how it makes you feel when they act a certain way, they are not going to know. So if you are just sitting back and you're going to go and bitch about them, you're going to go say, oh, like, you know, I hate when, you know, such and such does that. Or like, oh gosh, like she drives me nuts when she does that. When Really, if you had stopped, you know, wasting the energy, one, being pissed off with them for doing things that they don't even know upset you, um, and two, you know, running around behind their back effectively talking shit about them, you can use your energy in a much more positive way and literally just having the conversation and communicating is, hey, look, if you don't like my ideas, I really appreciate it. If you, if you would come straight to me and we could have a conversation about it and we can move forward. Or, hey, the other day when I sort of said, you know, X, Y, Z to you and you, I felt like you snapped back at me and you weren't listening to me and kept talking over me. Now, nine times out of 10, this is going to solve most issues because unless you're just a grade A asshole, you're not going out intentionally spending your day trying to upset people, right? Also, it may clarify why in that particular moment somebody snapped at you or somebody communicated with you in a way that you felt was disrespectful because you know, people have their own shit going on in their own lives too, right? So I can think of a very specific example for myself. And this is, you know, a huge part of self-awareness that I have really had to teach myself as well. So I'm a very emotional person and I had an issue with my dog Prada, which is, you know, she's 12 years old. She's really unwell at the moment. So, you know, I'm back and forth a bit all the bloody time. I have, you know, group meetings at work where I was not my usual energetic self when I really you know tried to be I couldn't bring it um, I wasn't going to try and force it I wasn't going to try and fake it um, and you know there were people around me that didn't really like the delivery of certain things or um, you know I wasn't as 
I guess, energized in the meeting or didn't bring to the meeting what was expected of me. And once I had explained that, actually, you know what, I've just spent the last hour bawling my eyes out over my dog who's at the vet. I'm absolutely devastated. And then it was like, okay, cool. She's not normally like this. She's just having a really, really shit day. And there are so many examples of this too. When you think about it, like I just had an experience then. Again, this is such a first world problem, but I have been looking forward to the smoothie bowl that I have every single Saturday. They made it differently to what they usually made it, make it, and it was shit. And I was devastated, but I'm not the type of person to arc up about that sort of stuff. And contrary to what I feel, well, I, I know this, a lot of people think I'm not a confrontational person. I really, really dislike confrontation. And unless it, you know, provokes an incredibly significant emotional attachment to me or, you know, leaves me feeling really shit, I'm probably going to let it go. So am I going to go back to this cafe and be like, you know what, you've ruined my bloody Saturday <laughs> because this smoothie bowl suck? No, I'm not. Am I going to chase the, you know, guy down the road that cut me off? in on main north road i'm also not going to do that old me might have this me not so much you know there's all these small things that is just like you know what they didn't set out to purposely ruin my day it just is what it is like shit happens that's the worst thing that happens to me today like you know i'm doing good and the other part of this is you confront somebody and you say look this is how, when you did this this is how it makes me feel you can both notice that in each other because if they, you know, consciously make an effort to not approach you that way or to change their style of communication with you so that you can coexist in a lot better way, then everybody wins, right? So you've got that outcome, which is awesome. But then you have the other outcome where you can repeatedly explain to people, when you do this, it makes me feel this. When you do this, it makes me feel this. And they continually cross that that boundary, if you will. And they continuously do all of those things that you have repeatedly asked them not to do. So I heard this metaphor the other day and it is just like stuck with me. I cannot get it out of my head. So I really want to share it. And I hope that someone can take something from it, right? So I relate this personally when I have to look to what I would normally do in situations. If you cross my boundaries too many times, yeah, it's likely you're going to be cut out of my life. But if I cannot, because of the environment, cut you out of my life as such, I need to then find a way to coexist with you, knowing that you do not respect me as a human or my basic needs as a human being. You know, yes, I can be dramatic. Oh, I'm such an emotional person, but I generally get along with most people. So you have to really be an asshole to get on this side of me, Okay. But I have to deal with you in whatever capacity that may be. And this is all hypothetical, by the way. But you all know these types of people. So the metaphor is, imagine yourself, I don't even know the metaphor, whatever, whatever this is, go with me on this. You are floating down a crystal clear river, right? So beautiful surroundings, you're out in nature, you're cruising down the river on this floating device, whatever that may be. I'm like, in my mind, it's a tube right? Laying in this tube, sun's out, you know, birds are singing, there are beautiful trees all around me and I'm just living my best life cruising down this river. So then I see this piece of trash and then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to take this piece of trash and then I'm going to continue floating, not holding anything really to it, not attaching any emotional anything to it. And then I'm going to see this bin floating down the river still, I see this bin, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this piece of trash in this bin, and I'm not going to think about it again. I'm going to continue about my life. I am trying to implement this thinking into this, I guess, notion of having to coexist with people that make you feel a certain negative way, okay? You're just cruising through your life, okay? You're doing the best that you can do. You are, you know, you've had the conversation. They don't respect the way that you expect to be treated at all. So, when they make you feel a certain negative way, just take that. Knowing your mind is probably going to sit there for a little bit, okay, but get rid of that as soon as you can. And don't carry it with you and hold on to it and attach too much emotion to it, knowing that you can literally just dispose of it and move on, right? Easier said than done. I completely understand that because there are just some people that just grate you and get under your skin. 
right? And I always encourage people to remove <laughs> those people at, you know, any available moment, I suppose. But if you can't do that and, you know, they're stuck around you for whatever reason, you can take the negative emotion and discard it as soon as you can. Do not hold on to it because chances are they're not thinking about you. Not even, not even chances. They're definitely not thinking about you. They're not concerned about how they've made you feel. They've made that very clear. They also are not thinking about how it may affect you emotionally because they obviously don't care, right? Take the piece of trash or the negative emotion and you put it in the bin and you continue about your life because you know that you're a good person and that you are attracting really great people around you because of the type of person that you are, right? There are just some things you can't just remove, right? So change the way you think about it if you can't change the environment. So I hope this resonates. Um, and if it does, let me know. I I feel really strongly about loving the shit out of people that are in my life. And I also feel equally as strongly as removing the people that are negative influences in my life. But I'm also not naive to the fact that I do have to coexist with some people, right? That you know, again, these are all those things like you're not going to like everyone. You're not going to like everyone in your family. You're not going to like everyone that you work with. You know, you're going to just come up with people that woke up and, you know, chose violence that day, right? Like my cat who just threw that thing off in the spare room I could hear. He wakes up every day and chooses violence, right? But I don't really make him from my life because I'm in love with him, no matter. <laughs> Different example. But the Facebook post, I just want to bring your mind back to it. Unfortunately, a lot of y'all met me when I were, when I lacked boundaries and was a people pleaser. Let me re, re oh my god, I completely butchered this. Let me reintroduce myself. I burn bridges as needed. Now, people cannot read minds. You need to teach them how you want to be treated. You need to communicate with them if they do not treat you as you expect. And if you can't remove them from the, your life and you are not, are you, and you are consistently not treated as you are expected, take that negative feeling, negative emotion, however that manifests for you, and discard it as simply and as quickly and as effortlessly as possible so that you can go on cruising down the river of your life. Okay. I can't, I've got a bunch more like awesome episodes. I can't wait. Um, thank you for all the positive feedback on the mega, com uh, no, sorry, main character energy um, episode. I, and that is actually um, interesting, in, well, interesting fact. I know it's a fact, whether you find it interesting or not, my most downloaded episode ever on the podcast, which is awesome. So I hope you are embodying your main character energy, putting out there how you want to be treated, removing as needed, um, and making sure that you are in the driver's seat of your awesome life. Okay, speak soon.